A-10 Thunderbolt II is ready to do its job of close air support and to stop the tanks during daylight and low weather conditions. Now operational with both the Tactical Air Command and the U.S. Air Forces in Europe, the A-10 has established new standards of responsiveness to the ground commander. However, the limitations imposed by nature, those of darkness and bad weather, affect the A-10 as well as most other aircraft. It is during these periods of reduced visibility that the need for an anti-armor aircraft may be the greatest. For potential adversaries are known to prepare, train, and equip for night armored thrusts in massive waves. Planners, recognizing the need to provide for capability growth in the A-10, ensure that the original design allowed for simple expansion to a two-seat configuration. Now this straightforward growth, complete with the necessary avionic tools, has demonstrated its ability to effectively deal with the other half of the vulnerable time. The answer to the night close air support question, the night adverse weather A-10. The Night Adverse Weather A-10, or NAW as it is called, is a modified single-seat A-10. The result is tandem cockpits, each with a full set of flight controls, an increased canopy area with two side opening canopies, extended vertical tails, and an array of avionics to perform the mission. The NAW retains the fuel and ordnance capability of the basic A-10. The avionics which have been added are a forward-looking infrared receiver and a radar, each mounted in pods under the wing, an inertial navigation system, a radar altimeter to accurately measure altitude above the terrain, a laser ranger and a low-light level TV system, and finally, a modified head-up display to present all this information to the pilot. This system is missionized to take advantage of the two-man crew. The pilot flies the aircraft and engages the targets handed off by the electronic systems operator. The ESO, in turn, navigates the aircraft, searches for targets with complementary systems, and then cues the pilot through weapons delivery. Okay, the mission for tonight is to attack a suspected concentration of tanks here. Our route of flight will be to start here and to use not only the cover of darkness, but also a low altitude technique for a maximum terrain masking throughout this complete route. We will hug the ridge line on this side and the west side here, so that throughout the whole flight, we will never be higher than any of the kind of surrounding terrain. So we'll use the valleys all the way through here, making a sweeping turn, and depending upon where the target is, we will reattack coming in this way to this point. To meet the threat of the heavily defended armored forces, the night adverse weather A-10 will employ the 30 millimeter Gao 8A cannon and when available, the imaging infrared Maverick missile to capitalize on standoff. While achieving standoff, these weapons permit firing at very low altitudes further enhancing survivability through terrain masking. The NAW A-10, with the same excellent low altitude maneuverability of the single seat A-10, is able to apply this characteristic at night, aided by its avionics. This spells survivability. Staying down amongst the terrain while delivering lethal ordnance from a distance, never having to pop up into the missile threat area. En route to the target during an actual night mission, the ESO uses all of the complementary systems to accurately navigate and pick his way through the terrain. Well, we open up in front of us there? Yeah. Went by that one at a couple hundred feet. Yep, sure did. The, the forward-looking infrared receiver, FLIR, presents a picture of daylight clarity to both cockpits by distinguishing heat patterns on the surface. Okay. 
the ESO controls the FLIR in both azimuth and elevation, as well as magnification for longer range work. Looks like all its low spot ahead anyway. Yeah, that is it. Finding an area of interest, such as a navigation turn point or a possible target, the ESO is able to generate a queuing box to overlay the subject and to project this on the pilot's head-up display. That's interesting. What's that? Going down this valley at night. Yeah, sure is. As the pilot rolls into a turn using FLIR information, the ESO brings up the low light level TV, momentarily replacing the FLIR imagery. The LLTV gains its real world display from illumination by minute light sources, such as stars or other small lights on or near the Earth's surface. This excellent picture can be provided to the pilot while the ESO slews the FLIR to one side or the other, cross-checking terrain or searching for targets. You have to really rely on a contour line. Yeah. The pilot's display in the HUD is a real-world display, just as in daylight, with several redundant systems contributing cross-checks and a variety of performance under different weather conditions. The HUD gives him everything he needs to tactically use the terrain while approaching the target. The radar generates contour lines to show the terrain slope at one and two miles in front of the aircraft. This permits the pilot to anticipate the terrain and to maneuver to keep masked by it. A velocity vector and a terrain following box are displayed for altitude control. For clarity, both airspeed and radar altitude are displayed digitally. A low altitude warning is provided by a flashing altitude readout when descent is made below a desired altitude. Navigation information is provided across the bottom of the display. The depressible gun sight and reticle are in the middle. The laser ranger, when fired by either crew member, portrays a range symbol on the inside of the reticle, which moves counterclockwise as the range decreases. Relative clock position corresponds to range in thousands of feet. Okay, you're heading straight to the lake bed. I'm going to use narrow field of view on this one also. Okay. Okay, go ahead and make your turn on around there about that 240 hitting and then slight pop. Okay, just follow the road. While using the LLTV, the crew homes in on a road, which is suspected to be a major penetration route by the enemy force. The ESO switches to a radar display, utilizing a moving target indicator mode. I don't know, I see something up ahead there. Yeah, some way up. I see something out there, probably about four miles. This sensor, which can look through the weather when the FLIR may be degraded, can isolate on only those returns that are moving at four knots or more and show them as bright targets on both cockpit displays. There's a big truck right ahead, it's about two miles. Okay, I'm searching. Yep, there's the target right down in there. Just give me 41. You get 41 to fire the laser. Okay, that's the truck right under your pepper right now. Right okay. That's it. Now a little bit to the uh, right left. Okay. Ah, that was a good hit, Wendy. Super. They're right up in there. Got them? Roll out. Yeah, I still on him. Right there. Okay, I got them. I need to go narrow. That's a tank for damn sure. You can see the shape of it. Yeah.
The simplicity and straightforwardness of this system makes air crew transition quick and build solid confidence on its employment. The combination of firepower delivered at very low altitude and the flexibility of a two-man team to react to the demands of the night and adverse weather environment come together to demonstrate a survivable system. One that is capable of extending TAC air responsiveness around the clock. One that is affordable. One that is available now. The Night Adverse Weather A-10. Right on, baby.